Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little something, 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 something that we want to talk to you guys about. Um, as of late, I've explained to a couple of individuals uh, associated with me some of the complications of this disease that are not readily apparent to everyone and some of the side effects that have been really, really causing a lot of problems. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot tell you all how to handle your taxes. If you filled out the W-9s, 2s, 4s, 8s last year's, well, not the W-A-B-E-N and so forth, but if you filled out those forms last year, then you have notified everyone that you are a taxpayer. If you filled out those forms and you filed and placed exempt on those forms, then you are going to want to pay attention to this. If you think that filing a tax return is going to get you more money next year when you file for taxes, remember, the only way you get a tax return is if you are a tax <coughs> payer. Are you understanding? Now, you can be a taxpayer for certain purposes, such as if you operate a corporation, you're liable for taxes because corporations are taxpayers. Sorry. That's why you dealt the 8832. Does it matter if the IRS doesn't accept you? No. Because an exempt corporation is an exempt corporation. See, everybody has the right to contract. So everybody has the right to conduct business. However, if you want to engage in commerce, Congress has the right to regulate you. I cannot tell you what you need to do. That's why when it comes to taxes, I don't usually comment on it too much. I just tell everybody I am a non-taxpayer. Do you see this case right here? United States Court of Claims, Economy Plumbing and Heating Company, Incorporated. I didn't know about this case, ladies and gentlemen. I never knew. But the people who told me that I was a non-taxpayer and that the law does not have a definition in the code for a non-taxpayer, I've been doing that since 1994. You guys... I can't tell you where the stupid video is because I didn't title it anything about taxes. But where I called the IRS and the IRS, after I give all of my information, seven times, seven times I told them the information. Now, ah, wait a minute. Let me check here. Okay. What's your mother's maiden name? What's your birth date? What's that number again? What's your mother's maiden name? What's your birthday? What's the address? What city were you born in? What's your mother's maiden name? Which seven times I went through that, ladies and gentlemen, only to have the person at the Internal Revenue Service. And yes, I reveal all the information. So some care with me and a duet the mother maiden name, everything on the Internet. They give it to everybody. Say, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. And the representative finally says, sir, I'm sorry, but I can't find you in our system. Oh, thank you very much. And I hung up, told her that's all I wanted to know. She said she couldn't find me in their system. That's all I wanted to know. Let me find something for y'all. We're going to do this one right here. They, the revenue laws, relate to taxpayers and not to non-taxpayers. Interesting. So I just told him I was a non-taxpayer. And guess what? Those laws, revenue laws, don't amount, don't account, don't amount to me in my personal individual capacity. The latter, non-taxpayer, are without their scope. What scope? The revenue laws. No procedure is prescribed for non-taxpayers to this day because they would have to change the revenue code. Hold on. Let me let y'all know. And no attempt is made to annul any of their rights and remedies in due course of law. You want to find this? 
Type in 281F at 4238. Uh, so watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Come on now. Come on now, little children. Get on board, little children. Get on board. You shouldn't be singing that. That's not the appropriate song for you to y'all. Oh, shut up. There's room for a mini on more. It won't let me copy it, ladies and gentlemen, but we got. Well, let's do that. It says, do I want to go to Westlaw? No, I don't want to go to Westlaw because Westlaw will have me looking up stuff and paying for it. So we got 128F238. So hold on. This is the actual document. So 128F at 238. Enter. That didn't give me what I needed, y'all. And I'm supposed to be able to pick that up. But anyway, what I'm going to tell y'all to do, and a real simple, real simple, economy plumbing heating versus U.S. And then you're going to type in this right here. I just won't. Uh-oh. No. Watch this. Yeah, we're going to do this right here. Copy. Hey, can somebody tell me why the road turns? Okay, do you see how I just, and I didn't even have to put in a 1972. I just have to put in 470 F.2D.585. Now, I'm going to do this because we're going to make it quicker so that you all know. I know y'all get tired of me just looking through documents, ser searching for terms. I don't like change. Can't stand change, but we're going to do control and F, and we're going to do non-taxpayer. Now, watch this. We're going to go down. It says the revenue laws related to taxpayers. Do you see that, ladies and gentlemen? So you use this in your documentation. OK, in other cases, suits have been filed by non taxpayers whose property has already been taken to pay taxes of others without filing claims for refunds and such. Uh oh, file a claim for a refund. You're a taxpayer. Didn't somebody just say that? Didn't somebody just say that y'all file tax returns, y'all taxpayers? Could you document you a taxpayer? See, I don't know how I understand all of this, y'all. I just understands it. Okay. And such suits have been allowed against the collector or the district director of the Internal Revenue in actions similar to old actions of assumptus for monies had and received, even though lacking in statutory authority. Okay. If you want to go after the bank for taking your property, Go after the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Go after them for taking your property after they had been enriched by the trading of your property on the market. You you guys just don't understand. Your agreement with the mortgage was for them to trade the property on the market. Remember, pay attention. And we're going to talk about the property and mortgage thing later. I did the video talking about the ultimate, and I guarantee that this will change everything from this point on. When you went and you signed the long docs, and I talked to a realtor, two realtors yesterday, two realtors. The first one I asked, I said, I need you to be objective. I need you to look at this from the actual standpoint and not the standpoint of understanding everything that's going on. I need you to look at it from your standpoint as an officer of the state. As a realtor, I said, loan docs. You guys deal with loan docs all the time. She said, yeah. I said, and when does the loan docs get signed? She said, at closing. I said, okay. And then how many times does a person affix their signature to those docs? Oh, she says, oh, over 15 times. Ladies and gentlemen, Every time you place your signature on something, that's a contract. 
when you place your signature twice on the same form, those are two different contracts embedded in one. That's you agreeing to the terms in that contract. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Many of you guys didn't know that. What you don't understand is the mortgage is not part of the loan docs. It's a separate contract. The loan docs is your receipt for the loan. The loan docs is your being approved by the bank and you're accepting that loan. That's what the loan docs are, people. Not the mortgage. The mortgage is a separate document. So, for those of you who have lost your homes as a result of them trading your property on the market, the courts have said that you can come in and you can sue. That's what these cases are. That's what they're saying here. You see, the collector or the, or the district director of the Eternal Revenue Service have been sued by individuals under the action and assumptus. But you don't want, I'm bringing an action and assumptus, Your Honor, because I don't know what the word means. I'm just bringing it, okay? Bring it on if you think you got it on. The above cases illustrate, illustrative of the proposition, Proposition H. No, not that type of proposition, mother. Okay, anyway, that a non-taxpayer is outside the administrative system set up for the collection of a refund of unpaid taxes and is not required to file a claim. Has the IRS placed a lien on you and your property? Have you not notified the IRS that you are a non-taxpayer? Hey, guys, he's saying ain't no sunshine. When she's gone, only darkness every day. This is Billy Withers, the late Billy Withers, ladies and gentlemen. And please understand, everybody and their grandmama appreciated this song. Ain't no sunshine. All right, let's get on with the, the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, just to let you guys know, we have been handling accounts for non-taxpayers. Most people don't realize that you only become a taxpayer when you announce that you're a taxpayer, i.e. tax refund. I told you there was a young lady, her name was Maxine Waters. And whether she will admit it now or not, I've been telling y'all for years, it was Maxine who told me to put exempt. She said, if I put exempt on my paperwork at work, see, a lot of people have been refusing to fill out the form. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a box there that allows you to put exempt. She said, if I put exempt for the first six months and go to the last six months, I'll never have to worry about somebody coming at me telling me I owe taxes. And so I did that. I did that for 10 years. Well, no, a little bit under about nine years because it was 1983. No, no, 10 years because 83 was when I got the first job by Maxine. And 94 was when I announced that I was a non-taxpayer to the Internal Revenue Service and hadn't filed taxes since. That's okay. They can come after me now because I would love to bring this particular case in there and exactly what the court said. This case has not been overturned, ladies and gentlemen. Now watch this. The appellees could not have maintained a suit for refund as could a taxpayer from whom a tax had been illegally collected. Their only recourse was to bring a suit to recover possession of the property of which they claimed to be the owners. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you I already knew that this is what they were saying. I've not read this. I just decided to do this video because the gentleman I spoke to this weekend, we were sharing information and he mentioned this case. And I said, oh, no, no. What's the name of that case? I stopped him immediately because we were talking about non-taxpayer. And I told him how I'm a non-taxpayer. And he says, well, yeah, that's in the case of blah, 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 economy, plumbing and heating. I said, what's the name of that case? And I, I said, uh -uh, and I'm writing this down. So slow down. I got to write all the words. Okay. And then this morning, I had a young lady, so it's not a coincidence, a young lady sent me a copy of something dealing with taxes, 
and about how individuals are refusing to pay taxes and stuff like that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not whether you are liable for taxes or not. It is not whether or not, I'm sorry, it is not whether or not the code was ratified or not. It is not, that has nothing to do with it. It is, and I said it backwards at first, it is whether or not you are liable for taxes. Whether you are a taxpayer, because taxpayers are liable for taxes, and non-taxpayers are not liable for taxes. The code has no jurisdiction over them. Because, say again, a taxpayer is outside, a non-taxpayer, excuse me, is outside the administrative system set up for collecting the refund of unpaid taxes and is not required to file a claim for refund. Okay? Now, that's this case right here, 1940. And it says it's squarely in point. They let you know. Pay attention. It's right there for you. So get the case. Go look it up. Now, let's find out what the next point of taxpayer, non-taxpayer, when they use the phrase. In both cases, the plaintiffs were non-taxpayers. Interesting. We do not think the filing of claims for refund in the present case makes any difference. The plaintiffs were outside the administrative system established for filing claims for refunds of unpaid taxes and were not required to file them. The fact that they did file such claim did not entitle them to any rights or benefits of the tax refund administrative system because they were non-taxpayers. The following logically, it follows logically that a non-taxpayer cannot overpay taxes and consequently there is no overpayment for him to claim by way of refund. See, people were claiming to be non-taxpayers and then claiming that they overpaid taxes. They're saying you could not have overpaid taxes because, you, and this is the court, they say you can't have it both ways, okay? So you're saying you pay taxes, but you're saying you're a non-taxpayer? Then what the f are you doing here? You could not have overpaid because you were a non-taxpayer. So what you gave was a donation. A non-refundable donation is what they're saying. Okay, I didn't say this. Pay attention. It follows logically that a non-taxpayer cannot overpay taxes and consequently there is no overpayment for him to claim by way of refund. It's a donation. Thank you for donating to our cause. We're the Internal Revenue Service and we are here to take whatever we can and the courts are here to help us take it and get away with it. <laughs> okay? Civil actions by persons other than taxpayers. Pay attention. Section 7426. I did not create this section. I don't know this section. I didn't even know this section was here, y'all. Okay? So let's do this. This has got to be the Internal Revenue Code. Yes, I believe that this is. Get that out of here. As we do not believe Section 7426 applies to this case because it is not enacted until 1966. See, the section. Uh, 7426, the bill grants U.S. District Court original jurisdiction over actions brought under Section 7426. So Section 20, 7426, I need to see what code it's in. I know, I'm believing it's in the IRS code, but y'all see what's going on with my screen. See, because I enlarge it, it sometimes don't want to give me control over here, so I got to do this. Okay. Y'all listen to my boy Teddy. He got it. He think he better let her go. She's nothing but a slow down two time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, what was I saying? Okay. Now, the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966, which provides in Section 7426B2B and 7426G1 of the Internal Revenue Code. So let's go to that code. Okay. All right. So it's the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966. So you had them take your property. You can go back and get your property by bringing a proper suit. But you're going to have to go over this case to find out why, how, and what you can do. 
and then you go and you pull a copy of the original suit. Yes, you might have to pay for it. It's okay. You might have to pay. It's okay. Because it'll be worth it. But anyway, let's get back to the non-taxpayer and the taxpayer. They, oh no, this is the beginning. I didn't ask to go up. I wanted to go down. We got to go down, 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 down. We went down too far. Go back up. All right, we're here. That is precisely the situation of the plaintiff. As no tax has been assessed against them, but was assessed against Leib. Therefore, Congress has, in effect, described plaintiffs as non-taxpayers. And where did Congress describe them as non-taxpayers? Anyway, and apparently the plaintiffs have agreed that this description is correct. We also agree. See, they said they were non-taxpayer. The court said they're non-taxpayers. Everybody is a non-taxpayer happy, okay? The term taxpayer in this opinion is used in the strict or narrow sense contemplated by the Internal Revenue Code and means a person who, oh no, excuse me, the term taxpayer means a person who pays, overpays, or is subject to pay his own personal income tax. See, section blah, 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 Internal Revenue Code. A non-taxpayer is a person who does not possess the foregoing prerequisites of a taxpayer. Now, wait a minute. Is that saying that even if I do engage in commerce, if I am not a taxpayer, but I'm engaging in commerce, but I'm doing so as a non-taxpayer, that I can do so and I don't have to pay taxes? I can't tell you that's what the court's saying. I mean, I'm reading that's what the court's saying, but I can't tell you that. What I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that if you operate a business, there is a tax exempt form. And that's the 8832. And on the 8832, you have to let them know you are a non taxpayer. Okay? Just that simple. This is what the courts have said. This is what the courts have recognize. But look, you can't be a non-taxpayer <laughs> and then in the next sense, file a tax return. Okay, because your taxes are donations. So you're going to have to make, pay attention, an informed decision. Not because you saw a video by me on non-taxpayer. I've already done a couple of videos explaining to people about the non-taxpayer position. I couldn't go into more detail like I'm going into today, letting you know this is what the court has said. I didn't say this. It was the court who says that the revenue laws relate to taxpayers and not to non-taxpayer. The revenue laws do not relate to you. Okay? No procedure is prescribed for non-taxpayers, and no attempt has been made to annul any of their rights or remedies in due course of law. When was this decided? This was decided 1966, people. In other cases, suits have been filed by non-taxpayers. See, non-taxpayers do have the right to file suit. But we don't care about why they were filing suit. We care only about the fact that a non-taxpayer is not liable under the code. In the above cases, they illustrate the proposition that a non-taxpayer is outside the administrative system set up for the collection and be, be, uh, hold on hold on this is the part you want okay is non uh, non taxpayers outside the administrative system set up for collection okay just that just set up for collection or pay attention i love this a non-taxpayer is outside the administrative system. See, I could take that phrase, that quote right there, and run with it. So should we be putting on our court papers that we're non-taxpayers? Because, and we can highlight this case here, that the United States Federal Tax Court, Court of Claims, said that a non-taxpayer is outside of the administrative system. Could we be doing that? Somebody like me would, because that's what I do. I take their words and use it against them. 
okay? This is not about unpaid taxes. The issue would then become whether or not a non-taxpayer is within the jurisdiction of the administrative system. You guys do understand a non-taxpayer is not part of the administrative system, but a taxpayer is all about the administrative system because the system is wholly administrative. That's why the code is legal. But again, this is me bringing you guys this information. <laughs> Did you say you're bringing us this information? Why would you disinform us? Ladies and gentlemen, shut up. Uh, I'm going to ask that you guys have a good day, have a good life, have a good night. But I just wanted to bring this information to your attention because many of you, you're going to find this information beneficial. Again, go and understand something. If I bring information to you, I'm going to back it up. Got to go. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night.